subtracting mixed numbers. When you want to subtract mixed numbers, it is a little bit different than adding mixed numbers because there's more that can happen. I want to demonstrate these subtraction of mixed numbers by the following examples that you see. So let's take the simple example, which is the first one, and try to work with that. So we have 1, which is a whole number, minus 1 over 6. Now, in order to subtract uh, fractions in general, we commonly need a common denominator in between. So now, here, in order to subtract, I can simply take 1 and rewrite it as a fraction. So 1 is equal to 6 over 6. Of course, if you take 6 and divide it by 6, you'll get 1 back. Now, why did I choose 6 over 6? That is because I notice that the denominator for the fraction has 6. So I want it to keep it consistent. So in this case, I can just simply rewrite my fraction. And now since my denominators are the same, so these are like fractions, I can go ahead and subtract, which is 6 minus 1. And that gives me 5 over 6. So this is a rather simpler example. But it's important because we will need to be comfortable in transferring a whole number back into this fraction format. All right, so now let's take a look at question number two. We have two and one half minus one and two thirds. One of the common things that is done is that many students will simply transfer this into improper fractions. And that works well when your mixed numbers are rather small. Okay, so here we have a two and a one. So we can transfer this into an improper fraction and then just simply find a common denominator and subtract. Now, I want to change this a little bit because for questions three and four, these mixed numbers are much bigger. And I want to use the same strategy for those ones. So what I like to do is I, just like in adding mixed numbers and the video you can watch, I actually simply work with the whole numbers together. So I'm going to say, well, 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. And then what I will do is I will take the two fractions and then I will work with those. So working with fractions, I have 1 over 2 minus 2 over 3. So yes, I have to find a common denominator in between these two. And if you like, you can watch the video on fractions, how to find common denominators in a systematic way. So here, I can see that the common denominator in between these two, between 2 and 3, will be 6. So I can transfer that. So 2 goes into 6 three times. So that is my multiplier of the numerator. And 3 goes into 6 two times. So that is the multiplier for the numerator there. And we have this. Now notice when I do this, I'm going to get 3 minus 4. And 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So in total, I have, I have this 1, okay, and then I have this negative 1, 6. So I just want to show you that this is really what, ha what may happen within working in mixed number format. So what you have is 1 minus 1 over 6. And that is exactly what we had in this example. So you can rewind and see. So that sometimes 
can happen. And in that case, well, if I'm going to subtract, so I'm going to do exactly what I did in the previous example. So I'm going to find a common denominator. So I have 6 over 6 is the 1. And then that will give me an answer of 5 over 6. And that solves the problem. So for mixed numbers, what I like to do is I like to work with the mixed numbers first. And then I just subtract the fractions. And sometimes, if necessary, yes, you will have to work out the fraction at the end. OK, so that's example number two. Let's take up the third example. So let me copy this down and bring it a little bit further down here. So now what we have is 23 and 6 sevenths minus 11 and 11 21sts. So here, just like in the previous example, I will take the two whole numbers and go ahead and subtract them. So I have 23 minus 11. And we can do that. So 3 minus 1 and 2 minus 1. So that is 12. So that is my whole component. And now I will take the fractions that I have and work with those. So I have 6 over 7 minus 11 over 21. So I have to find a common denominator in between them, 7 actually goes into 21. So a common denominator will be 21 here. Again, if you like, if you want a systematic way of finding these common denominators, you can watch the video on fractions that I have created. And so here, I notice so 7 goes into 21 three times. So that's my multiplier. So that will be 18. Nothing to do with the 11 over 21. So now I have 18 minus 11, and that is equal to 7 over 21. Now 7 over 21 can be reduced to 1 third, because 7 goes into 21 three times. So that is the fraction component. But notice, now it's positive, unlike the previous example. So when it's positive, then we have nothing else to do, and we're done. So the answer is 12 and 1 third. Now let's take a look at the last example. So what happens here? So let's copy this one down. We have 100, 1 6 minus 92, and 5 eighths. So again, the process is you take the whole numbers and you work with those first. So 100 minus 92 is 8. And now we can work with the fraction components and subtract those. Now notice this example is a nice example because if you tried to convert these back into improper fractions, you would have huge numerators. For example, if you would say 6 times 100, which is 600, plus 1, that's 601 over 6. So you would have to deal with an improper fraction that is rather big. And that's why I find that it's much easier just to simply work with the whole numbers and then subtract the fraction component. So let's come back to this example. So we had 100 minus 92, so that's 8. And now I am going to be working with the fraction. So I have 1 over 6 minus 5 over 8. 
let's find the common denominator. I will do this, okay, so now using the table that I have done in the video on fractions, how to find common denominators. So between 6 and 8, so I'm going to use the primes to reduce. So 2 goes into 6 three times, 2 goes into 8 four times. Now I notice that I have a 3, so I can reduce this by 3. So 3 into 3 goes once. I'm done here because I ended in a 1. 3 does not go into 4, so that stays the same. And now all I have left actually is the 4, so that can be driven down by 2 or reduced, and then by 2 again to now yield for me the common denominator. And so this provides me the denominator, so 2 times 3 times 2 times 2, so that's 24. So we have a common denominator of 24 in between these. And now, well, 6 goes into 24 four times. That's my multiplier. So 4 times 1 is 4. 8 goes into 24 three times. So that's my multiplier. So that's 15. Notice now I have 4 minus 15. And that will give you negative 11 over 24. So let's bring everything together. So we had a whole component, so of 8, and now I have negative 24. So I have to do this subtraction here. Okay, so what I do is what I you seen in the first example. So when I notice that I have to subtract from a whole number, so instead of converting the whole number entirely into a fraction, I break this whole number into 7 plus 1, because 7 plus 1 is 8. So I always take away 1, because then what that allows me to do Okay, so I can bring this down. I can simply work with this. So I do not touch the 7, but I can subtract, and I have 1 minus 11 over 24. And just like the first example and the second example, so 1, so I can make a common denominator, so 1 is 24 over 24 minus 11 over 24. So now subtracting these two, so 24 minus 11, and that gives me 13. So my final answer is 7 and 13 over 24. So now you have seen several examples of subtracting mixed numbers. I highly encourage you to try to do these because it's not as easy as adding mixed numbers. It was much simpler then. Okay, so a little more can happen here. I hope that you found this useful.